the Fun Kids Book Club with sticker dollies, Baby Dragon and Mermaid in Trouble. Join the magic dolls, Grace, Lily and Holly on more adventures featuring your favourite magical creatures. Well, hello and welcome to the Fun Kids Book Club podcast. My name is Bex and every episode of this podcast, you can hear me chatting to an amazing author. Today, we're going to be speaking to Sophie Hen. Now, she's got a brand new book out called Pizzazz, all about a superhero schoolgirl. So, shall we find out more? So, I am joined on the line by Sophie Hen. Hey, Sophie, welcome to Fun Kids. Welcome back, I should say. Oh, thank you so much. It's lovely to be back again. Well, I am thrilled because uh, I've read your new book and I love it. It's called Pizzazz <gasps> and it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was hoping. So, I'm um, I'm very happy you came away with, with that impression of it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I got it in the post and I, un- I unwrapped it and I was like, this is going to be good. It's from Sophie Hen. I know it's going to be good. And it lived up <laughs> to my expectations. Uh, can you tell? our listeners a little bit about it well pizzazz is a superhero she's born into a family of superheroes because that's apparently how it usually works um but she's she's quite reluctant about being a superhero um she's not sure that it's really as super as as um as everyone thinks it is she has to wear the same outfit all the time she's always dashing off in the middle of stuff she's enjoying to doing um she's always dashing off to save the planet um and she has to be the good guy all the time even when she's not so sure that she wants to be so um so i think in essence that's that's uh that's pizzazz um but this book um follows her as she her family moves and so she has to start a new school and um, she has to go through all of that slightly agonizing bit about um, fitting in again and finding, you know, finding your spot. And um, that's hard enough normally, of course, but when you're uh, wearing a long flowing cape with your name splashed across it in big letters, that tends to make it a little trickier. So, um, so we see how Pizzazz copes with all of that. And of course, being a superhero at the same time. Yeah, because like you say, she'll be in the middle of something and then suddenly we'll be called away to go and save the world. It's quite a fine balance for a, a nine <laughs> and a quarter year old. Nearly nine and a half. Yes. Nearly, no. It, nearly. <laughs> the all important quarter. Yes. No. Absolutely. You know, you can have your favourite tea sitting in front of you, and um, and then uh, once once the call comes, you've got to got to leave that nice hot pizza and um, and go and save the planet. And then when you get back, it's all cold and shriveled, so you just get a banana and have to go to bed. So that's quite rubbish. Um, but yes. Uh, and and so it's I, I just thought it was um quite fun to look at look at being a superhero from a slightly different viewpoint because there are lots of really keen and enthusiastic and perky superheroes rather like Pizzazz's little sister Red Dragon um and the world definitely needs those but I thought it might be quite fun to um to to look at it from the point of view of someone who wasn't so, so sure they wanted to be super. Yeah, a bit of a reluctant superhero. I really love the character because uh, obviously the book is told from her point of view, from her voice. And uh, was she fun to write? Because she's got quite a lot of attitude, but she's also... She's cool and she's funny and she's very down to earth, like she's really relatable. Yes, she was really fun to write. Um, With a lot of my books, I do, um, I I think about my daughter a lot um, when when I'm writing them. And I remember how her and her friends used to chat when they were that age. Um, And I think it's, um, it's that point in your life where you kind of like, you're discovering your opinion on things as well. You don't just sort of... um, hear stuff and and go yep that's fine you, you start to have an opinion on things so um so it was it was really fun to write that and um and give her her little her sort of mini superpower of eye rolling at things mm-hmm. as well because I seem to remember that a lot and of course her main superpower is one we don't find out about for quite a long oh. time and that was a real page turner for me I <laughs> well I can't I can't give the game away no. um, right now but suffice to say it of course is the most embarrassing superpower in the world ever <laughs> eye roll um, and of course, Pizzazz has it. So poor thing. Um, but yes, and it's so bad. She um, actually on occasion considers letting the baddies win. Um, so she doesn't actually have to use it. So what on earth could it be? <laughs> I love it so much. I love that her family is so supportive, but also remind her she still has to do normal real life things, uh, you know, <laughs> have to be a bit more down to earth. And also, um, if people are reading the book, they might be surprised by like the little comic strips that you've also put in there as well. Yes. I, I mean, I love comics and um, Pizzazz actually started life as a little comic 
um, and it was created for my daughter. And uh, and so it, I felt it was really important to, to keep the comic element of it. And we all are used to seeing superheroes presented in comics as well. So I thought it was quite fun to have um, the illustrated um, text throughout the book but then when she has to fly off and be super um i can i can take all the action and and put it into a comic strip um and create some fun baddies as well to go to go in those comic strips so i had lots of fun with that i also love her friend who is a kid villain as well that little kind of relationship that comes up a little bit later kapow yes yeah. they but um they met at nursery and they've been secret friends ever since so as Pizzazz isn't sure she wants to be a superhero, Kapow isn't all that sure he wants to be a super baddie. Um, but they're, they're secret friends. Um, and it's handy because um, one of his his uh, superpowers is telepathy, so he can send her little messages as and when he needs to. <laughs> There's such a lovely cast of characters in the book, uh, not just the superheroes, but also friends as well. Uh, and Ivy, who helps Pizzazz in her kind of eco-warrior state, um, I, I'm hoping we'll see these characters again. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm nearly um, finished with book two now and um, book three is, is, is planned out. And uh, yes, Ivy and the Eco Committee, but also Pizzazz's old friends from her old school, Susie and Tom, they're all still in there, um, as is Kapow and, um, and the rest of her her it's you say eclectic family yeah. <laughs> there's a real mix um uh yes but um I, I i really enjoyed the balance between pizzazz's super life with all these crazy characters and these crazy villains but then her school life and her friends and the fact that even though she does, she's not sure she wants to be super and save the world all the time even when she's at school she finds herself doing the eco um, committee. So she just can't seem to help herself from saving the planet, no matter what she does. <laughs> it was in her all along. Also, by the way, <laughs> will we see more of Auntie Fury? Because she is intriguing to me. Yes, I think Auntie Fury, Auntie Fury is definitely uh, popping up later, but you know, we don't like to talk about her much, do we? Because she's, 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 she's the, She's the auntie that went to the dark side. So, um, <laughs> so yes, and of course, Wanda, who is I think one of my favourite characters, who is part part dog, part telephone. Um, <laughs> she features heavily in uh, in book two as well. Oh man, amazing! You must have had so much fun writing this. Did you get to watch lots of uh, comic, uh, lots of comic book films? Did you read lots of comic strips in the meantime? Well, I. Yes, I did. I was I, I, the bit that I really loved was researching all the um, the sort of the comic book graphics and the and you know all the flashes and the all the comic book noises. I really enjoyed um, creating those. And uh, yes, yeah, so so that was great. And then the styles and the book, the whole book is black and white. There's no grey or anything in it. But I've used something called half tone, which is. Um, a way of using lots of small dots and you use either big dots or small dots to make areas look like lighter or darker um which is quite an uh an old-fashioned print method and was used in really old comic books so i really love doing that um and researching all of those and i, I mean i love a superhero <laughs> movie anyway it's uh, i make no no bones about that so um so that wasn't a problem <laughs> um, which is your favorite superhero then i have to ask well, it oh, it's um I've got lots, but I do love Wonder Woman. I I grew up in an age of one Wonder Woman, but I have to say I was very thrilled with the last Wonder Woman film. I thought that was brilliant, and I'm very excited for the next one. Um, but I also love well, Baymax. I think is a pretty oh, yeah. awesome superhero because he gives hugs as well. Yes. So that's a pretty good superpower. And then of course the Powerpuff Girls. So it's quite quite a heady mix there. <laughs> see how all of them have made their way into pizzazz uh, they are <laughs> three excellent reasons uh well we should say sophie uh, the book is out right now so everybody yeah. needs to go and buy it right because it's uh, it's a brilliant cover it's a kind of a greedy uh, orange silver black kind of festival and uh it's such a fun book so thank you so much and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the actual studio for the next one. Oh, that would be lovely thanks so much for having me such a big fan of sophie and we'll be back with a little bit more after this now, we ask every author who pops by Fun Kids for their favourite childhood book, so we ask Sophie that very same question. So now Sophie is going to tell me about her favourite childhood book. This is something that only podcast listeners get to find out about, so Sophie, take it away. 
<gasps> well, there are so many wonderful books to choose from. It's quite it's quite hard, and I did love reading an awful lot when I was little. But I did love the Millie Molly Mandy series by Joyce Lancaster Brisley. Um, uh, Millie Molly Mandy is a girl who lives in a little village. It's rather idyllic, um, but she has all sorts of very little adventures. Um, and as a small child, I found these adventures really exciting because they felt like the sort of adventures I could have. Um, so I really loved it from that point of view. And also there's a map at the front. And who doesn't love a book with a map at the front? <laughs> yeah, maps. I have to say they're always a way into my heart if there's a map at the front of a book. Oh. I'm with you on that. <laughs> so do you think Millie Molly Mandy, uh, what, was there a kind of inspiration from that? Do you think there's a direct line from that into the books you're writing now? Oh, it's probably not an obvious one. I think the characters are very different because the characters in Millie Molly Mandy, it was written a very long time ago, I think in the 20s. I might have that slightly wrong. 1920s, that is. Um, and um, uh, But the fact that she finds fun, excitement and wonder in just the everyday things. I really like that. And I, I'd like to think that that comes across in my books, particularly um, probably, you know, Bad Nana and Pizzazz, those little small adventures that happen in your everyday um, and make the books really relatable. I think that's important. I have to say, this is a series I've never heard of before. So I'm <gasps> intrigued by this. Oh, well, it's probably because I'm really ancient. That, that, <laughs> that That's why. But um, no, they're still, they're still all available. Um, and there, there is a little series of them. And they are, um, each book contains lots of little stories. So perfect for little bedtime treats. Oh, I like this. You can unwrap a, a separate story every night of the week. That's excellent. Absolutely. And also her favourite, um, one of her favourite snacks in it is inspired favourite snack for me when I was little, but also then for my daughter. And it's a real comfort food. And it's something called lid potatoes. So it's basically baked potatoes and you've got to get them nice and crispy. And then you top off the top of it, scoop it all out, mix it with butter, salt and pepper, and then put it all back in. And that's a lid potato. So it's... Um, it inspires excellent snacks as well <laughs> as adventures. Oh, man, that's inspired my lunch, not just an excellent <laughs> snack. Sophie, that's, that's delicious. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I'll have to go and research Millie Molly Mandy because I'm intrigued. Um, and I love it when people bring new books to us. So, so, Sophie, that was perfect. Thank you. Brilliant. I hope you enjoy them. I will. Uh, that was fab. I genuinely have never heard of them. Uh, <laughs> It probably is because I'm ancient. Um, yeah, no, they're all they're all out and about. Um, they can be quite. Um, I, I worried about picking them because they're they can be slightly cute. Do you know what I mean? But um, oh, actually, right. those were the books that I liked when I was. <laughs> I'm too honest. Um, oh, <laughs> the ones I so wished I'd had were Pippi, um, Pippi Longstocking, because I discovered those with my daughter, and she's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. And we managed to get a very exciting little reading from Pizzazz too. So here we go. Chapter one, the bit about me. Okay, well, I'm nine and a quarter, almost nine and a half, and my name is Pizzazz. Yes, you did hear that right. My name is Pizzazz. And yes, it is completely embarrassing. And no, I don't think it's a proper name either. But as with most things around here, it really doesn't seem to matter what I think about it. With a ridiculous name like Pizzazz, I should probably be a magician or a pop star or a really smelly perfume. But I'm not any of those things. What I actually am is super. Not super as in brilliant or terrific or even very good. I am super super. Actually super as in superhero with powers and stuff. Because of this, I have to wear a costume and part of that costume is a very annoying cape. It gets in the way, flapping around my feet and trailing in puddles and getting stuck in doors, but I still have to wear it all the time, not just when it's cold. And my ridiculous name, which in case you hadn't already guessed I hate, is written right across the back of my cape in huge shiny letters. Super. I come from a family of superheroes, which is generally how it works. Not always. I mean, there's the occasional freak accident in a scientist lab or a weird weather insect reclusive millionaire incident that ends up with a perfectly normal person being able to climb up glass buildings or make lightning or jump really, really, really high or suddenly talk in a low gravelly voice. But mainly you're just born and find yourself in a family of superheroes and you can fly and stuff. Then 
If you are like me, you might find yourself wondering why you don't feel quite as delighted about this as the rest of your family does. The most annoying person in my family is definitely my little sister. She's like a superhero crossed with a cheerleader, crossed with someone who is completely good at everything. Oh, and did I mention she's really happy all the time? Well, she is. Also, unlike me, she's actually got a cool superhero name, Red Dragon, which is just another of the many reasons I know my parents prefer her to me. I call her Red for short because Red Dragon is quite a mouthful to say if you just want someone to pass the TV remote, get a snack or even go away. But she is absolutely not allowed to call me Piz. If I'm feeling generous, she can call me Zaz, but she's never really sure when I'm feeling generous. And if I'm honest, neither am I. So she tends to just call me Pizzazz. With a name like Red Dragon, obviously her superpower is that she can breathe fire, which is really useful. Not just for defeating baddies, but at barbecues too, and for birthday cake candles. She's also got super speed, which is okay, I suppose. They are all way cooler than my superpower, which is the least cool of all the superpowers, and in fact so uncool that sometimes I even consider letting the baddies win, so I don't actually have to use it. Yes, it's that embarrassing. Anyway, I cannot even talk about it right now. It's all just so unfair. My parents were sort of super famous about a million years ago, because they have saved the world about a trillion times. But these days, they just make me and Red do everything. Neutralise rockets, realign planets, load the dishwasher. It's like we're their personal servants or something. And if you think it's hard to have your mum and dad cheering you on from the sidelines at sports day, try having them cheer you on while you and your irritating little sister divert a planet-sized meteor that's on a direct collision course with Earth. Yup, no pressure. And unlucky for me, it's not just my immediate family that are completely weird. Oh no, it's my entire family. There's Auntie Blaze, Dad's awesome sister, Wanda, sort of part pet, part telephone, me, duh, Dad, Mum, Red Dragon, annoying, Gramps, Mum's dad, Grandma, Mum's mum, Uncle Teaser, Mum's little brother, Uncle Titano! Yes, there are that many O's. Grandmother, Dad's slightly scary mum, and Auntie Fury, Dad's sister who went to the dark side. We don't talk about her much. Also, we have a dog. She's not exactly a pet dog, more like a total bossy boots who happens to have four legs, a tail, flappy ears and can't resist running around after anything you throw. We call her Wanda because that's her name and she came to us for Mission Control who are basically in charge of which super goes where, saves what and when. So instead of having an actual phone to talk to Mission Control, like normal sensible people, we have a dog who receives and transmits messages and generally keeps an eye on us. Although totally embarrassing and completely weird, it does actually work okay most of the time. Though Wanda is absolutely not allowed to go on any missions anymore. This is because Dad threw one of the bomb's super scratchy itching powder bombs into outer space just before it exploded. But Wanda zoomed off and fetched it right back just in time for it to explode and make us all itch forever. Well, not quite forever, but at least a month. We also have two guinea pigs. Well, I have one and my sister has the other. They are actual pets and don't do anything other than the usual guinea pig stuff. But they are still super, just normal super, like great. My guinea pig is called Bernard. I named it before I knew it was a girl, but it's still really suited to her and I think she likes it, so I stuck with it. My sister's guinea pig is called Rocket and is actually just as annoying as she is. They are both always dashing about, achieving stuff and basically showing off. Bernard is more laid back like me. We both like to sleep a lot and eat a lot too. And we have the same favourite snack, prawn cocktail crisps. Nice. Most people seem to think that being a superhero must be completely brilliant. They are actually very wrong. You have probably guessed that I am not particularly thrilled with being super. But there are a few good things about it. Just a few. Oh man, thank you so much to Sophie Hen for having a chat with us for Fun Kids. We absolutely love her. And I've got to say, her new book is so funny, so great, full of amazing illustrations. Definitely go and check it out. That's pretty much it from the podcast today. Remember to rate five stars, review five stars, and subscribe wherever it is you get your podcast from. And we'll see you really soon. Bye. The Fun Kids Book Club with Sticker Dollies. 
baby dragon and mermaid in trouble. Join the magic dolls, Grace, Lily and Holly, on more adventures featuring your favourite magical creatures. <laughs>